Thank you very much. And uh, I'm really honored by this very kind invitation to present uh, the Pakistan Association of Urological Surgeons uh, lecture on setting up a cost-effective endourology service in a, in a resource-restrained environment. <clears throat> I am Hamad Akhtar, Professor of Urology at Aar Khan University in Karachi. Pakistan is uh, the fifth largest country in the world with a population of over 220 million. <clears throat> and uh, uh, Karachi, where I work and live, uh, is the largest uh, city, the port city, with a population of about uh, 22 million. Pakistan Association of Urological Surgeons uh, was founded about uh, over a quarter of a century back. Uh, it's a very vibrant organization. It has over uh, close to about a thousand members, full members now. This is where I work at Al Khan University in Karachi, and we have a state of art. Uh, the innovation and training center with the uh, good quality virtual reality uh, simulators for training endourology. These are some of the workshops that we regularly uh, hold uh, on laparoscopy, on the endourology with the whole beam laser resection, TUR, TUR, BT, etc. So <laughs> Urology uh, in a spirit is essentially minimally invasive surgery. Uh, endourology, laparoscopy, robotics are all part and parcel of urology. It's a very technologically dependent speciality. Uh, by virtue of this, cost of healthcare escalates exponentially uh, for urological patient. And uh, this cost burden is taken up by purchases, which is private and public sector, both the providers, which are hospital and physicians, and ultimately the patient. Uh, unfortunately, significant uh, proportion of private patients in Pakistan pay from their pocket. Uh, the health insurance is in the earlier stages, and not more than 20% patients uh, end up having an insurance. So we have to be economically cognizant. Um, and uh, we need to look at the cost effectiveness of any new technology. We have to look at the cost benefit ratio and the cost utility analysis has to be done in order to, um, to use it in, in, in a country like Pakistan and other low middle income countries. So in order to define cost effectiveness, we have to first define effectiveness of a treatment. Uh, for urolithiasis, stone free rate is the default um, setting to define effectiveness of a treatment. Uh, many years back, we wrote this paper in Journal of Endourology talking about uh, the efficiency quotient rather than the uh, the actual stone-free rate in which we obviously you incorporate the additional treatment, the times of treatment is, is, uh, is administered, for example, for ESWL. If the treatment is done more than once, the effectiveness of a treatment decreases. So it's important that we have the correct definition for effectiveness. Once you have done that, the important thing is to determine the cost effectiveness of a new treatment. Now, if the new technology is, the cost of new technology is less and effectiveness of the new technology is more. There is no doubt that uh, this should be incorporated into the armamentarium, even for low and middle income countries uh, where there are issues with resources. Endourology is highly dependent upon imaging. And it was some 20 years back, uh, this paper, Danish paper, uh, said that intravenous urography, which has served the urological community uh, for many, many years, uh, nearly a, a century now, uh, need to retire and new treatment, new imaging modalities should be incorporated. And that's a time in point where uh, the CT became the more or less default imaging for uh, most urolithiasis patients. Uh, we wrote this paper about over 10 years back 
in which we talked about the paradigm shift in the imaging of uh, ureteric colic. Uh, and is it time to say goodbye to an old trusted friend, which was IVU? So if you look at uh, our own data, and this is uh, uh, over a period of 2002 to seven, even at that time, as you can see in adult patients, the number of IVUs done falls significantly and the number of CT scans, uh, mostly non-contrast CT increases significantly. Uh, the trend was not uh, that uh, remarkable in pediatric patient, but it follows the same trend. As you can see, there are more CTs performed rather than the intravenous urographies. Let's talk about the uh, treatment of uh, stones in various locations. And I think that's the theme of uh, the, the major bulk of our work. Uh, ureteral stone, uh, perhaps the most commonly uh, uh, treated pathology in, in majority of the urological centers around uh, the country, uh, being in the stone belt. Uh, this is a paper that we have written uh, a long time back in, in British Channel. And at, even at that time, uh, looking at the data from 1987 to 1998, we noted that uh, the urethral the numbers of urethral lithotomy gradually started to go down. Uh, the lithotriptor was introduced in our hospital in 1989. And uh, at that time, we started to see a little surge towards uh, more lithotripsy. And ultimately, we did realize that not all urethral stones can be effectively treated by lithotripsy. At that time, we had a 13.5 French ureteroscope only. And subsequently, uh, in 92 onwards, uh, we acquired a eight French ureteroscope. And you can see a little surge in the ureteroscopies which were done. And subsequently, when we had a final ureteroscope, uh, six French semi-rigid, uh, the number of ureteroscopies started to increase and the number of lithotripsy uh, started to fall down. If we look at uh, later data, and this is unpublished work, you can see that uh, ureteral thotomy is really at the bottom with hardly two to five procedures done uh, uh, per year, whereas uh, lithotripsy uh, was a significant number in the, in the early 2000s, and subsequently, the, as the scopes become finer, uh, more uh, of uh, ureteroscopy is done for ureteric stones. And I think that's a trend all over the world. What about kidney stones? And uh, kidney stones, again, uh, open surgery is becoming, becoming even in, in our part of the world, uh, uh, a dead art. Um, if, you, if you look at uh, this data from 2006 to 2022, open surgeries for stones in adult population was significantly low. And a very similar trend is also noted for pediatric patients as well, because a vast majority of pediatric patients are dealt by lithotripsy. And once we had the finer uh, endoscopes, a uh, significant number are now treated with percutaneous surgery as well. So we do about over 150 uh, PCNLs per year, and uh, the numbers are, are increasing uh, with uh, the finest scopes that are being introduced. <clears throat> In 2015, we acquired our first uh, flexible ureteroscope, and uh, that was the co Cobra from Wolf. And it has been serving us uh, quite uh, faithfully over the last seven years. Uh, the Boston Scientific LithoView was also introduced, but it didn't gain much ground because of its cost. Uh, the single-use Chinese uh, and uh, flexible ureteroscope like Fusion and then subsequently OTU and some of the other varieties were really very made a huge difference and uh, an impact on the use of uh, flexible ureteroscopy all around Pakistan and because of the cost factor. Uh, if, if you look at our own hospital data uh, introduced in 2015 and gradually the confidence increased 
and we were doing close to about 60 to 70 procedure per year with flexible urotroscopy and and majority at the time we used uh, the uh, the uh, the uh, <clears throat> flexible uh, disposable scopes now uh, there is data about reusable versus uh, disposable uh, chapman's paper some years back indicated that uh, the disposables are more cost effective and this is in a in a us setting uh, in the western world setting and uh, if you look at our own data we had five uh, wolf cobra uretroscope uh, these are obviously uh, fiber optic reusable scopes and uh, we have been uh, the first one was used for fewer procedure then we had damage and subsequently the last one uh, that we have, uh, we still have that, uh, has been so far used for over 75 procedures and still functioning. The overall cost of this is close to about 100,000 euros, whereas the cost of disposable scope is uh, um, <clears throat> about 30 to 40,000 euros. Uh, and so that's that's an, uh, our experience as well, the disposable. But uh, mind you that uh, we use disposable scopes uh, three times. Uh, it has to go through the infectious disease um, evaluation and they, they recommend that uh, it can be used once properly sterilized for three times. So that's how we were able to cut the cost down. <clears throat> now, we can't afford to have two procedures uh, for flexible ureteroscopy. So majority of the time, if the ureter is naive and has uh, is not had any previous stones in the past, we do use uh, six frame semi rigid urotroscopy. We use metal dilators as well in order to do the procedure in the first go. And that's very important because otherwise it doesn't stay. Uh, very rarely we have to uh, put a double J stent only. And then obviously the patient has to have two procedures. This is uh, the typical trolley. And you can see a semi rigid urotroscope, the uretric metal dilators, which are reusable. Uh, eight French uh, rigid uretroscope, and then we have the Cobra scope that we use. Um, percutaneous nephrolithotomy again is the mainstay because a uh, vast majority of our patients have significantly large stone burden. Uh, the training and teaching of these has, has been important. Now, uh, because of the introduction of mini and super mini and ultra mini PCNLs, although we didn't have an access to all those kinds of scopes. And since the market is relatively small compared to India, uh, uh, I have used uh, the McDonald's straw, properly sterilized, obviously, and uh, uh, the semi-rigid uretroscopes to do mini PCNLs. And uh, we've been very effective using laser. Laparoscopy, again, uh, had a relatively slow start uh, it was started by one of our pediatric surgeons uh, in, the, in the urological uh, care. And uh, subsequently, we, we started to do it in, in, in adults as well. The number of procedures that are being done has increased steadily over the years. Uh, and uh, uh, we hold regular courses in which we have faculty from within and outside Pakistan who come and teach our trainees and we certify 10 urologists every year with um, advanced laparoscopy uh, in our in our uh, simulator labs and uh, on on live models as well. So, old saying, uh, Hippocrates said it two and a half thousand years back that I will not cut persons laboring under the stone, but leave this to be done by practitioners of this work. And practitioner of this work in the modern era is really who knows how to do it in a minimally invasive fashion. Uh, success, really the difference between success and otherwise is not lack of strength, but essentially is the lack of will. So where there is a will, there is a way. Thank you very much for your attention.